please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships 2020. There are two mathematics exams, one for social sciences, mathematics A, and another for natural sciences, mathematics B. This problem is from the 2020 Mathematics B questionnaire. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. The last problem for this questionnaire requires us to find the volume V of the solid formed by rotation of A in 2, meaning this problem here, about the x-axis. This problem is rather straightforward. We just need to remember two things. First is the formula for the volume of revolution V about the x-axis. So if we recall, if we have an x, if we have the x-axis here and we have a curve above the x-axis, say the curve C, then the volume of revolution about the x-axis is, is the, is the solid that is formed when we take this, this curve and we rotate it. We revolve it about the x-axis. And so, if we start with that sheet, with that cross-section, we'll end up with a, with a figure like this, which is symmetric with the x-axis and, and it's revolved around that. So it's like a cylinder, but the shape of the side is not really fixed. It, it, it varies with y. So if you look at this this new figure that we have, if you want to get the volume of that, one way we can do that is we think of a strip. Let's say this strip here, and let's make it very thin. And it's so thin that we can call the the height of that, the thickness of that, as dx. And now this strip is, of course, the, the cross section there is like a circle. If you look at it from from this from this side, what you'll see is you have a circle there, right? Because you revolved it around the x-axis. Now that circle will have a radius of y. That radius is the, is the height from the x-axis to the shape to the curve c. So that's y. And and when you revolve that, that becomes the radius of your circle, right? And so if you get the area of this disk, that's pi y squared. And if you want to get the volume of this disk, you have this area times this height or thickness, which is dx. And we do an integration that looks like this. Pi y squared, which is the area of this disk, times dx, the thickness of the disk. And we do that from the x at the end, we call it x sub o in this case, to the x at the end here, which we call x sub n in this case. So we just need to remember this. And the second thing is again, while this formula, this is going to make the integration easier. So just to remind ourselves, it says that if we have the trigonometric functions sine and cosine, then if we have if we raise them to the nth power, we raise them to the nth power here like this, and we get their integral, the definite integral from zero to pi over two. Remember, the limits are important. So this only works if we take the integral from zero to pi over two, then the value of that definite integral will be equal for when it's sine and when it's cosine, and they will also be equal to the values here. So if n is even, we just chuck in pi over 2 here, and then we multiply it with this, with this, with these terms here. So we start with n, which is even. We subtract one, that becomes numerator. We subtract another one, becomes a denominator, and so on, until you reach 1 half. And if, it, if n is odd, then what we have is, we start with 1 instead of pi over 2, then we start again with n, subtract 1, subtract 1, subtract 1, until we reach 2 thirds. Now all we need to do is integrate, and we recall that the differential of x is equal to the derivative 
of x with respect to d theta to theta times the differential of theta. So when we do the integration, so again, we know that this is the volume here, but we need to replace it with theta instead of x because we are given the function in terms of theta. So the limits of integration now become 0 to 2 pi because theta is between 0 to 2 pi according to the problem. And pi here is retained. Then we have y of theta here. Then we just square that. And then dx, differential of x, is just replaced with dx d theta times d theta. Now we just replace those functions with their values. So y of theta is just 1 minus cosine theta. And from the first part of problem 3, we know that dx d theta is 1 minus cosine theta. So it's just the cube of this expression. So 1 minus cosine of theta, if you cube that, we obtain the following. We get 1 minus 3 cosine of theta plus 3 cosine squared theta minus the cube of cosine theta. And now we just distribute the integral because that's going to make it easier for us. The pi is a constant, so it goes out. Now the integral of 1 is just theta. And if you do that from 0 to 2 pi, it's just 2 pi minus 0. So 2 pi is here. Now we get the integral of cosine theta. And again, we know that if we have a trigonometric function, sine or cosine, and if we try to get the, the integral from 0 to the period, and in this case, the period is 2 pi. So here what I've drawn is a sine function. But can, if I start at the middle instead, that will become a cosine function. And we know that the area here is equal to the area here. This is 0, 2 pi. And the sum of the area here and here is equal to this, to this area here. But because this area here is negative, if you sum them all together, that will be 0. And so we know that when we integrate this from 0 to 2 pi, we get 0. And the same is true if we multi if you if you raise cosine to an odd power. So for example, we raise this to the third power. This will still be positive. Here would still be negative. Here would be positive again. But the shapes again, the areas under the under them would still be equal. This, this, and this. And so when we do the integral here, that's still gonna be zero but of course when the when the exponent is 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 even then this bit here gets for example in this case squared so it becomes positive it goes like that and again the area here is equal to one half this area here which is equal to this area here and equal to this area here so we can break that into four so this bit, when we integrate this from 0 to 2 pi, we can actually break it into four integrals. So we just copied the 3 here. But now, instead of integrating from 0 to 2 pi, which is, for example, from here to here, you break that into four parts. That's why there are four here. And, and each part is actually the same of the same area as the other parts. And because there are two, far, two parts, then that's from 0 to pi over 2. So 0 pi over 2. So this part is 0 to pi over 2. And this bit here allow, allows us to use Wallace formula again. And here, that's what we did because this is even. So we have pi over 2 from Wallace formula out here. And then we start with exponent 2. We subtract 1, put it in the numerator. And this is already one half, and so that that ends our process. And then we just simplify the whole thing. So we have pi, we have two pi, and this is four, four, four here, cancel. So two two pi plus three pi, and we just again simplify that, and that gives us five pi squared. If you learned something new today. 
please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!